But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump poses, do you really think that that is is it equal yeah, evil I mean, to I, Biden? I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is a much worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech, so to censor his opponent. I, you know, I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court that shows that he started censoring not just me. For 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIH, to censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history, to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents. For that being RFK. He's weaponizing the federal agencies. Those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Trump, of course. I want to play that again in one second to make sure my audio levels are leveled. Let me just hear what I sound like live. We're going to see if the audio is good. We should be live across. I'm a, I'm a, I came in a little hot. A, li a little hot. We're good. Everybody, it's 12.01. Good afternoon. Holy cows. Um, I was telling the locals community before. I was telling the world before. It, it is exhausting to try to keep up with the lies. We're gonna go back and watch that video because I wanna highlight Aaron Burnett's face like, oh crap, I shouldn't have asked that question. And then I might pull up Aaron Burnett interviewing Zelensky where she's touching her lips and putting her hands, oh, asking Zelensky about what his favorite music is, what it's like to be Zelensky. Um, th that clip is amazing. You understand that RFK has now had I mean, I see, other than the assassination of his father and uncle, has had now direct personal experience with the, if you ask Dick Painter, the deep state that doesn't exist, the corrupt administrative state, and um, is now saying the quiet part out loud. And it's going to throw a, a wrench in the wheels of everybody who thinks RFK is in this to take votes from Trump. He's ans asking the questions, answering the questions, um, that they probably shouldn't be asking him. The, the man is eloquent. The man is intelligent. And I want to replay it and highlight just a couple of things as we let the crowd get in, share the link around, everybody. Painter is a tool, <laughs> says Natalie McGlynn. I mean, she's a very, he, he holds sincere beliefs, but yes, might be able to be qualified as anybody who denies the deep state or, you know, says the deep state doesn't exist, but a corrupt administrative intelligence apparatus exists. All right, good. So you don't like the word deep state. Let's just call it what you want. Let's call it the sheep state. All right, let me bring that back in because I want to I wanna watch this one more time and talk about what RFK is talking about. Here, bada bing, bada boom, replay. But do you really believe that when people talk about the threat to democracy that Trump Look at Aaron, poses, look at Aaron. Do you really think that that is, is this an equal, yeah. evil? Can you ever understand the threat to democracy that Trump poses I'll, I'll make it a bold statement. He poses no threat to democracy. Not only does he pose no threat to democracy, he is the living, breathing personification of what happens when democracy gets turned into kangaroo republics. Imagine accusing the man who was deplatformed of being a threat to democracy. Imagine accusing the man who was hastily brought up on impeachment charges, not once but twice, calling him the threat to democracy. Imagine calling the man who was the victim the object of three and a half years of Russia collusion bullshit, the threat to democracy. Imagine accusing the man who is now being indicted across states, uh, removed from the ballot across states. Imagine calling him the threat to democracy. You have to be a brain dead idiot or a viewer of CNN or Aaron Burnett or apparently just a Democrat these days, but a lot of them are defecting. Michael Rappaport, by the way, hate him or love him. And I know a lot of you probably hate him. Did an interview, said he's uh, voting for Trump is not off the table, but voting for Biden is. 
Okay, let me let me play this again. So yeah, yeah, but Trump is the threat to democracy. He's such a threat to democracy that you gotta lock him up, jail him, gag him, and take him off the ballot. You raging, raging hypocrite morons. Well, to Biden. I, I mean, listen, I can make the argument that President Biden is much worse. Look, right there. Look at her face. Look at her face. Look at Aaron Burr. President Pat. Biden is a much oh, worse threat to democracy. And the reason for that is President Biden is the first candidate in history, the no. first president in history that has used the federal agencies to censor political speech. So to censor his opponent, I, you know, I. The problem is collective memory is so short. It's almost like people forgot about the Twitter files already. It's almost like people have forgotten about Biden v. Missouri or Missouri v. Biden. It's almost like people forgot about everything the deep state was doing while Trump was running for president again. We're going to get into it today because it all it's a big fat cycle loop of, of corruption and dishonesty. 51 intelligence agents coming out and claiming that the Hunter Biden laptop bears the earmarks of Russia disinformation. Notice they phrase it in such a way that it wasn't a lie because they didn't say it was Russian disinformation because they knew that it wasn't. But the intelligence officers sign a letter saying it bears the earmarks of Russian disinformation, which it might very well. You think American disinformation looks much different than Russian disinformation campaigns? But forget about that. You forget about the fact that you had the former general counsel for the FBI as an executive within Twitter, setting up back channels for the government to come, easy access, flag accounts, weaponization of social media for the benefit of a political party. We've forgotten about all of this already, because why? It was two years ago. I can say that because I just won a case in the Federal Court of Appeals and now before the Supreme Court. I should also apologize for screaming. It shows that he started censoring not just me. For 37 hours after he took the oath of office, he was censoring me. No president in the country has ever done that. The greatest threat in democracy is not somebody who questions election returns, but a president of the United States who used the power of his office to force the social media companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to open forgot. a portal and give access to that portal to the FBI, to the CIA, to the IRS, to CISA, to NIA. Remember who else Remember who else weaponized the IRS? Oh, I mean, was it uh, the IRS? Yeah, the IRS. Was it Obama? They, they, uh, the, but no, they get to run out and accuse Trump of being the threat to democracy while they literally turn the country into a kangaroo republic. I don't know if that's the right terminology for it, but you know what I'm getting at. To censor his political critics. President Biden, for the first first president in history to use the secret, his power over the Secret Service, to deny Secret Service protection to one of his political opponents. Deny Secret Service protection, and then they come out and cry about how Trump is issuing threats against them. It's, Trump is out there issuing dog whistles. Trump puts a video, we're going to get into this boy howdy today, of a tailgate decal of Biden uh, tied up in the trunk of a car, and it's a, it's a gag. I mean, they actually sell one of Trump, but you don't hear anybody talking about that. And then they accuse Trump of being the one to instigate dog whistles of violence. Deny Secret Service protection to your political rival whose father and uncle were assassinated by the non-existent deep state. Holy hell is Goebbels rolling in his grave or at least looking up from hell and saying, my goodness, the Democrats have taken this, accuse your adversaries of doing what you are doing to create confusion to the next level. For political reasons, he's weaponizing the federal agencies, those are really critical threats Donald to democracy. Donald Trump, of course. End it. All right. Before we get into the sponsor of today's video, because there is one, you might have noticed as you came in, I said this video contains a paid sponsor. I am, uh, I am not only not beyond um, apologizing when I make a mistake and admitting I was wrong when I make a mistake, but doing it publicly and loudly and proudly. I'm not sure that I did something wrong here, but look, bottom line, I've been, I call people morons and I call people raging idiots. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I know that they deserve it. And every now and again, maybe I use the term moron too flippantly, or uh, I use it to someone who's not a moron or who is not necessarily engaging in the type of deceit that I might've presumed, assumed, thought they were engaging in. This is what happens last night. Hold on. The, the Simon Atiba, a table, Simon, a table, post the video flashback, Barack and Michelle Obama welcoming Donald Trump, Donald and Melania Trump to the White House on January 20th, 2017, after Trump defeated Hillary. Watch. And it's a beautiful video. Look at this. 
and I, you know, we all read things into things and we infuse our underlying presumptions into things. And I see this video and I seen how people use this video to say, look what Trump should have done in 2021 after being defeated by Joe Biden. Look how courteous and gracious Obama is. They're handing over. It's the transition of power. Peaceful. No insurrection. No challenging the election results. This is how gracious, courteous people do it, right? How Obama and Michelle shake hands. Well done there, Trump. Nobody thought you were going to win, but my goodness, you did it. So nice to see you. How are you? Oh, nice to see you. Hugs, kisses. Where was where was Trump when when Biden won? He was insurrecting the country. So I see this. We don't need to watch the whole video. And I uh, tweeted. Oh, the, somebody screen grabbed it because I deleted my tweet. I said I deleted my previous post because it was unduly harsh. Has everyone forgotten that as Obama is shaking Trump's hand, job well done, sir, you really won that election, he was spying on the Trump campaign. Oh, they, they didn't wiretap them because they don't wiretap anymore. They were spying on Trump Tower. They were filing phony indictments against people in Trump's orbit so they can two-step to surveilling Trump. While Obama is sitting up there, polite, clean cut, you know, courteous, a, 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 a role model for all men across the country shaking his hand, seeding defeat, or at least seeding a job well done. He was spying on Trump campaign, trumping up bullcrap Russia hoax collusion garbage that would mire Trump's presidency for three and a half years. There was no peaceful transition of power here. There was actually the most violent transition of power that you never heard of, a soft coup, a deep state coup. So while he's sitting there smiling, kissing on the cheek, oh, well, come on in, it's your house now, as we sink your presidency with bullshit Russiagate collusion. So I was a little irritated watching this, and I said, you do realize they were spying on Trump when they were shaking hands. And then I said more. And I felt bad because people were saying, Viva, Atiba is a good guy, and maybe I was infusing a little too much of my own preconceived notions into that video. So I deleted it. Then I said, Obama was spying on Trump. This is no evidence of him being good, courteous man. On the contrary, it's evidence of his duplicity and deceitfulness. And because the internet is forever and I know it, and I'm glad someone screen grabbed it, this was the tweet that I regretted. And Simon, I apologize. People said you are a good dude and you didn't mean what I thought you meant by that post. And to the extent that that's true, I apologize to you and you only because I wronged, if I wronged anyone, only you. But anybody who thinks that that's evidence of Obama being courteous, law-abiding, peaceful transition of power, you're a moron. You're a moron or worse, you're probably one of the liars who we're going to look at today as we go through this. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Now, as we are live across the interwebs, we're live on YouTube. We are live on Rumble. We are live on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. What was I going to say? Yeah, for those of you who are new to the channel, we start on all three platforms. We end on CommieTube and we go over and vote with our dollar, vote with our eyes, vote with our eyeballs, feet, and dollar. Those are the three ways to vote. We're going to go over to Rumble. We end it on YouTube. After we're done on Rumble, we come over to the vivabarnslaw.locals.com community for our after party. And something that we do in our locals community, well, let's get my footstool because my feet don't touch the ground <laughs> in my chair. What we do in our locals community from time to time uh, we have basically a chat, a discussion with a locals supporter. So um, we're going to do that today. And today's victim of the chat is going to be Stephen Briton, who has been around for a long time. And we got Greg in Houston. I know I've seen him before. Viva Bri Boo. Um, oh, yeah. And by the way, all of these things here. Does RFK have Secret Service protection yet? I don't believe he does have Secret Service protection yet. Let me just Google this and make sure that I'm not inaccurate. Does RFK have secret service protection yet? He writes an uh No, I do not believe he has secret service protection as of now. I might be wrong, and if I'm wrong, chat, please correct. YouTube takes 30% of these beautiful things called, uh, what are they called on YouTube? Super chats. Rumble has the equivalent called Crumble France, and they take 0% of that. So if you want to support the channel, you can give tips on YouTube, uh, Rumble Rants on Rumble, or the best way to do it, it hold on, I'm listening to myself again. Uh, the best way to do it is on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. It's 10 bucks a month to support, or 100 bucks a year if you get the whole year in one shot. You get tons of exclusive stuff for the supporters. There's a massive community for the members who do not have any financial obligation. You know, no, there's no financial requirement to be a member. And we've got a massive, wonderful, above average community 
at uh, vivabarneslaw.locals.com. Now, speaking of high blood pressure and all that jazz, uh, the one thing that everybody should do, that the best line out of Princess Bride ever is after not Lord Humperdinck, but his brother finishes torturing Wesley in the pits of despair, and he comes and talks to Lord Humperdinck, or you know, he says, uh, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. Well, setting aside the humor of that joke out of that movie, if you don't have your health, you have nothing. So the first thing everybody has to take care of is their own health, because without that, you are no good to anyone around you. Anything else, you're no good to, well, you are still good. I'm, I'm, I'm being harsh, but take care of yourselves. And if you don't take care of yourselves, um, it, it, we are made in the image of God, despite what some people think. We are made in the image of God. And if you don't like the term God, we're made in the image of a, not to get too divine, uh, of an intelligent design, because this this doesn't happen by accident of the world in which we live. That being said, the cornerstone to every healthy diet is eat your fruits and veggies. Uh, you may or not know this is supposed to have five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Raw fruits and vegetables a day. And most people don't have that anywhere near that. And French fries are not a vegetable. Deep fried, salty French fries, though delicious, though having some value, are not vegetables. Get your fruits and veggies. If you do, you can still do this. And if you can't, you should certainly do this. Fieldofgreens.com. It's not a supplement. It's not an extract. It is desiccated fruits and vegetables, pulverized, like jerky beef, but pulverized. You mix it in water. It tastes delicious. Uh, it's got one spoonful, has one serving of fruits and vegetables, all of the antioxidants, all of the good stuff. You do that twice a day, two spoonfuls in a cup of water, stir it around. It looks like swamp water, but swamp water looks like that because it's nutrient rich. It's the source of life. You do that twice a day. You get your tours, two servings of fruits and vegetables twice a day. It's a healthy habit. It'll knock out an unhealthy habit. If you go to fieldofgreens.com, it, it brings you to Brickhouse Nutrition. Uh, put in promo code VIVA. You get 15% off your first order and free rush shipping. And it's good stuff. It tastes delicious. The link is in the description. And I want to thank my sponsor. And I, and I drink this stuff. So it's easy to sponsor something that you use yourself. Now, with that said, everybody, holy crab apples. We're going to do the all they do is lie on YouTube. We might not get through the whole segment. And then we're going to move on over to the rumble side. Oh, I feel like I'm chest. It's not hurting. It's not defecated, BC Zuhal. It's desiccated, although I have a bit of a lisp. And so it might sound like that. That, that is my joke. All right. All they do is lie. And you can't believe it. They lie with such brazen impunity. And then they accuse others of lying. Then they accuse Trump of lying. And the they, oh, it's such a big circle loop of, of, of disinformation laundering. And I called it out a while back and some of the players are the same players here. We're going to start with, with one thing that's been going on here that you've all been hearing. That Trump incited violence against Obama. Not Obama, <laughs> against Joe Biden. Look at me, they're going to go... 20, Article 25, Viva, that he um, incited violence against Joe Biden. Uh, he threatened violence. He, it, criminally, according to some who have been floating really wonderful, stupid legal theories. And um, you hear them talking about having taken a picture, posted a picture of Biden gagged, bound with, and I'm not going to say because I don't want anyone accusing me of having said it. This guy right here is, oh, geez, what's his name? Andrew Weisselman? Anyway, here, look. Let me see. Listen to this. Oh, yeah. A Andrew Weissman. Listen to what he has to say on MSNBC. Planting the seed of disinformation that others are going to run with. And by the time it gets laundered through the social media machine, the low information viewers at MSNBC, the low information followers of tribe law and the like are going to say, Oh my goodness, how could he have done such a thing? The magistrate judge warned Donald Trump that the most important condition for him was that he not commit a crime. Well, you know what? Threatening the president of the United States is a crime. Um uh, no shit, Sherlock. I threatening the president of the United States is indeed a crime. And when uh what's her face? Madonna threatens to blow up the White House, some might say that's a crime. When Kathy Griffin holds an effigy of a decapitated and bloody Donald Trump head, some might say that's a crime. When Maxine Waters gets out and says you must absolutely harass them and get in their face and give them no peace and don't let them eat at restaurants, some might say that's a crime. But what's this crime that you're alleging Donald Trump committed? The United States is a crime. 
Uh, and so the question would be the legal question yeah, let's and the factual legal one question. is whether what he is engaged in with respect to posting the image of Joe Biden uh, bound and uh, gagged gag? with what appears to be a bullet hole in his head, with really? what appears to be a bullet hole in his gag? head, with what appears to be a bullet hole in his head, is it constitutes that kind of threat. The magistrate judge warned. Bear in mind, by the way, this guy, unless I've made a mistake, Andrew Weissman is co-host of NBC podcast prosecuting Donald Trump. No vested interest there or whatever. Doesn't matter. A two-time New York Times bestseller oh, with the Trump indictments and where the law ends inside the Mueller investigation. This guy sounds totally trustworthy. This guy used to be former general counsel for the FBI. The magistrate judge warned Donald sure Trump. He used to be former general counsel to the FBI. I'm reading my tweet because I know that when I wrote that tweet, I was certain of the information. The former counsel, general counsel to the FBI, is now getting out and spreading outright disinformation. Outright disinformation. Is it bound? Okay, in the trunk of a car. Yeah, it's a freaking, I mean, I don't particularly find it funny. Uh, what they call tailgate art. Funny anecdote, by the way, as I left law in Canada, I got involved in a company called tailgate art. We didn't do political stuff. We did like beautiful deers and all this stuff. And you can go back and find some videos where I was, you know, uh, making content uh, as relates to this, what do they call it? Tailgate art that wrap. They, they go on the back of trucks. You measure them. They're beautiful. You have to apply them with a the, you know, credit card to make sure it goes on properly. Uh, it's tailgate art. It's stupid. It's juvenile. I mean, it, it looks kind of funny when you see it on someone's tailgate and you're driving like, holy crap, what is that? And then you realize what it is. They have ones like sharks and oceans and they have deers and all this stuff. But no one was gagged and sure as sugar, nobody had a bullet hole in the head. So what the hell are you talking about, uh, Andrew Weissman? So he does, he he comes out and says that. Then you get other people spreading this lie. None other than Lawrence Tribe, who you might remember from such debunked legal theories as it's a perfectly plausible and tenable and legitimate legal theory to exclude Trump from the ballot because of insurrection. That Lawrence Tribe, he writes the following. In all seriousness, under existing law, it's unclear whether posting on Truth Social a picture of POTUS tied up and shot in the head in a moving truck under the present circumstances amounts to a true threat under Section 81. There's the old David Mamet uh, expression, every fear hides a wish. There's the old Joseph Goebbels expression, accuse your adversaries of doing what you are doing. They're arguing that Trump is making a threat by saying it when he, A, he never did this as a pure matter of fact. Has it been community noted? Hell no. Why would it get community noted? It's only a strongly, verifiably, demonstrably false allegation of fact that's a lie that's going to influence people into thinking Trump posted an image of Biden with that. I'm not even going to say it because I don't want people clipping that out of, out of context. So I ask, where the hell's the community note on this? I ask, what the hell's going on here? Where did you, did they see another image? They didn't. The image is the video. It's a, it's a, it's a pickup truck with New York plates. And it was Biden bound and looks like he's being held, uh, you know, kidnapped in the back of a truck. They also sell one for Trump. But this amazing thing, so now you have the, you know, history repeats past this prologue. You have former intelligence signing off on a letter saying, Something that was factually accurate is actually factually inaccurate. Now you got Andrew Weissman coming out and saying, bound, gagged, and depicted as having been shot in the head. And then you get Lawrence Tribe coming out, the lawyer, the Harvard professor, coming out, repeating the disinformation and making, making, uh, you know, uh, making truth out of it. And it's something that I actually picked up on a while back. And I, and I, and I remarked on it a while back. This is how disinformation laundering works in real time. When was this? October 20 through 23. This is how disinformation laundering works in real time. The lie from MSM propagandist, Darren E.G., whatever, the lie gets repeated and buried by a lying politician, Daniel Goldman. The lie gets further repeated and further buried by a legal analyst, Tribe Law. And then let me see if I can bring this up here so we can see how it worked the last time. Trump faults Netanyahu, calls Hezbollah very smart amid the war. Then you got step two, Daniel Goldman, the liar who replaced Shifty Eyes McShift for Brains, Adam Schiff. This is his replacement. It's Shift 2.0. After the worst terror attack in Israel history, Donald Trump criticizes Israel and praises the terrorists, praises them. 
yet again tacitly giving aid and comfort to our enemies, making another accusation of a crime. Insurrection is of sorts. The man is a danger to national security and must never be in public office again. Ooh, is this a threat, Daniel Goldman? Sounds like one. Oh, and look who we got here. The tribeman is out again. Apart from his constitutional disqualification under Section 3, 14th Amendment, where'd that go, Lawrence Tribe? Where did that go? It went up a creek without a paddle. 9-0, you got spanked, embarrassed, and humiliated before the rest of the world. How you, I mean, you're probably tenured at Harvard. How anyone takes you seriously as a legal scholar, a Harvard professor, I will never understand. But of course, I'm not a Harvard professor. I don't spew lies and untenable legal theories that get smacked down by a nine to zero margin of the Supreme Court. What do I know? Sorry, apart from his idiotic argument on Section 314th Amendment, Trump disqualifies himself by his conduct and his comments almost daily, proving himself totally unfit to hold public office and an existential danger to our nation's security and to our democracy. Well, what, what, what are you suggesting that people ought to do with an existential danger, Lawrence Tribe? Is that, a, is that a dog whistle call to violence? A lot of people might say it is. So you got Lawrence Tribe yet again in the mix of disinformation laundering. Well, he heard some intelligence guy say it. Gagged and shot in the head. And then Lawrence Tribe because it says shot in the head. Well, given this fact pattern, yeah, given a fact pattern that doesn't exist, you might have legal conclusions that don't exist now and that we're not going to come to now because the fact pattern that you lied about doesn't exist in real time. Scum of the earth. And with them, I know it. There will be no apologizing for having called uh, Lawrence Tribe a raging moron, hypocrite, scum of the earth, moron, liar. Liar is the worst. <sighs> uh, not sure if you have seen this piece where the daughter of Mershon that Trump is being gagged ordered for was working with Adam Schiff, paid her millions of dollars to promote and prosecute Trump. Sandy Labourdette. First of all, I would remember this name if I've ever seen it. Uh, I've never seen it, so welcome to the channel. Oh, we're going to talk about it on the free speech side of this when we head over to Rumble, because based on all of these lies, 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 and more lies, they then go in front of Judge uh, Merchant, Marchand, not French, I think it's South American, and um, get Merchant, Marchand to issue a gag order, which we covered last week, which apparently wasn't strong enough, because in that gag order, the judge allowed Trump to publicly comment on the judge and the prosecutor and their family members who may or may not have strong political bias ties, who may or may not be campaigning off the prosecution of Donald Trump, like Leticia James in New York, like uh, big Fannie Willis out of, out of Georgia. It's an amazing thing. They accuse Trump of corruption. They accuse, accuse Trump of, of perverting democracy. All of these judges are engaging in election interference right now. All of these actors are engaging in fortified election interference right now as we speak. Oh, don't worry, we're gonna get there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, some, put some tags on some of these. Don't I feel better now? No, I feel, oh, about the apology or about venting about um, all, of the, uh, all of this crap? I don't feel better. It, it drives me nuts, I'm sitting here. It's impossible to keep up with the lies. I'm like, holy crap, didn't I see Lawrence Tribe do this before? This exact same MO. So yeah, we're getting into it. Venting, okay, yeah, well I do, I don't know if I feel better. Someone sent me, um, no, it wasn't um, a blood pressure machine. I got one upstairs. I can, I can. Hey, let me see if I, let me, let me, I'm going to text, I'm going to text my wife and see. Um, holy cows. Hold on. I just got good news. Absolutely. Exclamation point. I got to be somewhere early tomorrow. And when I know that I can share the, the reason why I'm going to share it. Let me see if my wife, is she here? Number one wife in all of. Florida, duh. can you bring down the blood pressure machine, question mark? I don't actually think I have high blood pressure because I exercise a lot. I think my only unhealthy habits, if it is, is I probably drink more alcohol than the Surgeon General recommends, and I certainly eat more red meat than people think is recommended. But let's see if, but I do eat, I mean, I eat an excessive amount of raw fruits and vegetables, excessive, and I will not get into the TMI. Marianne! <laughs> we'll see if she can bring it down. All right, and before we head on over to Rumble and drop off of Commitube and vote with our dollar, our feet, and our eyeballs, I got some goodsies in the, in the mail today. Um, Anton's uh, beef, I mean, he, I, I'm getting it and it's delicious. So I got some biltong. But, and I know who sent this to me because I found, I found the card. 
I got this in the mail today. Wait, 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 like this. There you go. This is classic Georgia Viva Frog. So I've got a bunch of like license plates. That was actually my license plate back in Quebec. And the Viva Fry, how do I get my hand to go that way? The heck, that one uh, is, 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 you know, someone sent that to me as well. Uh, I love these things. And we can start like a trend or at least a tradition. So I'm going to put this one up in the backdrop. But you know who you are? Uh, uh, Scarab. I know Scarab's in the name on the uh, Rumble, on the uh, locals. Thank you. This is fantastic. Okay, I'm put that there and I'll set it up afterwards. Oh, I'd like to pick your brain a little bit. How do you think we have gotten to this point in history? And realistically, how will this change? Brian Klein, I mean, okay, I'll answer this question, then we're going to go over to um, Rumble, and I'll give everybody the link. I don't know how we've gotten here, and I don't know how we've gotten here so quickly. I, I mean, I remember, first of all, I remember not ever feeling the need to get into politics, uh, and that was because the necessity was not there, at least on a, on a personal level. Uh, that's no longer the case. Now the, now the necessity to get political and to get into politics, because my literal life and family depends on it you okay? <laughs> she has if i'm okay just want to see are you screaming and now you need your blood pressure taken? we're gonna do this people in real time see how this goes what do you think let's take guesses in the chat as to what my blood pressure and pulse is going to be at i'm going to say it's going to be 117 over 78 let me just feel my heart rate for a second Live streaming at the bottom. <laughs> Live stream at the bottom. <laughs> okay, we're going to do it. I'm going to say it's going to be 117 over 78. Pulse is going to be 63. Check this out. Okay. Got to lower the, lower the pulse a little bit. Is this the first time anyone has done a live stream of their blood pressure? Real? It's not a real license plate. But okay, hold on. Is this thing called Omicron? No, it's called Omiron. 117 over 78, pulse 63. Oh, it is high. 130 over 90. <laughs> it's 130 over 93, pulse 79. That's not, that's, I exercise. I exercise this morning. Okay, thank you. Um, for God's sake, <laughs> now Marion's doing hers. <sighs> so I don't feel bad. What was I just talking about before that medic? The pressure went up to 170. Uh, so that's, um, that's it now. I was, <laughs> oh, Viva thinking about Fanny. Marion is doing the blood pressure machine, standing <laughs> up with her arm bent. That's going to falsify it. All right, everybody, here's the link to Rumble. Let's go to Rumble. I'm sweating a little bit, but it's hot in here. Link to Rumble for us to get into the rest of it. And, oh, no, that's what we were talking about. How did we get here? I don't know how we got here, but it's exponentially um, increasing in, in seriousness and rapidity of decline. Like, we've gotten to the point where the system has been so weaponized in real time, we've forgotten about examples of the past where it has been so weaponized. I listened to letters from Birmingham over the weekend. And, you know, where that we're talking about, although it wasn't in letters from Birmingham, this is our Martin Luther King Jr. after he's arrested for nonviolent protest. You know, calls to action. Arrested for nonviolent protest. Locked up. And then you think like, oh, well, the guys from January 6th, they got what they deserved. You think Adam Johnson got what he deserved for taking a false picture? I mean, a false picture, for taking a picture and then being falsely accused of theft and then 75 days in, 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 in jail with however many days in solitary? Oh, no, but like, yeah, fuck around, find out. That's what, that's what the left likes to say now. Go ahead and do that to Martin Luther King when he was pulled over for going 30 in a 25. Well, he should have been driving safer. Oh, well, but when Trump gets fined a half a billion dollars for bullcrap, well, they, he should have just done business better. Imagine the guy had done business for 40 years, never had a run-in with the law, was, was, was America's sweetheart, loved, won the Ellis Island Award in the late 80s for brotherly love, all of a sudden goes against the Democrats, becomes a raging racist, all of a sudden becomes a criminal. So corrupt that after corrupt politicized hacks like Leticia James and Fannie Willis who campaigned off prosecuting Trump. Well, then they found their crimes. 
how quickly we descend into communism, how quickly we forget about the, the lessons of the past. Martin Luther King should have just been driving slower. He shouldn't have been protesting peacefully. Oh. Now she's, her heart, her, Marion's, Marion's blood pressure is always lower than mine. I'll, I'll, wait, no, leave it here. I'm going to do a follow-up at the end of the stream. Please. Thank you. So how do we get here so fast? I don't know. Where does it go from here? I don't know. I, I, I'm not a believer in violence. And it's not, I, I'm, 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 I'm reluctant to even say that this can end in violence because someone will accuse me of a fear hiding a wish or dog whistling. Violence is not the answer. If there's one thing Martin Luther King understood is that violence wasn't the answer, but that didn't work out too well for Martin Luther King. Disbanding these three letter agencies didn't work out too well for, for JFK. So I don't know what the solution is. How bad does it have to get before even Democrats say, holy shit, have we gone a, a, a step too far? No, and, and then, but then you get the institutions and it's outright fascism in its purest sense. You get the government bullying, colluding with social media to sanction, suppress, censor. And then you get the, 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 the government weaponizing all aspects of government. Every single aspect of government, the judicial branch, the prosecute, well, that's not a branch, the judicial forces, prosecutorial forces, you, you get them to weaponize that and go after targeted their political rivals. 2020 summer of love, chop Chaz, they took over a freaking police station. Insurrection? No. The summer of love, Kamala Harris was campaigning or boasting about raising money to bail out criminals. Insurrection? No. When they do it, it's good. When, when January 6th, they got violent. Some of them got violent. We know. And if you don't think it was a Fed surrection, good. Go listen to MSNBC and Aaron Burnett. It was a Fed surrection. It was a let it happen on purpose or even a made it happen on purpose. Solitary confinement, years of pretrial detention, excessive, exceedingly constitution violating sentences for these people. 20 years for Te Marco uh, uh, Terrio. What's his first name? Oh. Enrique Terrio. Eight, set, what did he get? 17 years? Seditious conspiracy? It dude wasn't even there. In FBI infiltrating the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys. And yet somehow the FBI comes out and says, well, we got caught with our pants down. We were, we were half staffed because of COVID. And then Trump's the one to blame for not calling in the National Guard. But if he calls in the National Guard, there's your armed coup that they said he was going to do. Holy shit. I mean, sorry, sorry. I don't feel any better now, but it's, I'm gonna, we're going to get it out. Holy crap. Talk about weaponizing everything. You do nothing. It's, an, it's a passive insurrection. Call in the National Guard when Nancy Pelosi and Yogananda Pittman didn't ask for it. Well, there you got your armed coup. There you got uh, Trump deploying the military to remain in power. <laughs> call them lots of names. One thing you can't call Democrats is uh, stupid in the tactics that they use. <laughs> this might be the most gross. well this might be the most uh, um it's not unhinged it's totally hinged I, I i'm sitting here 2016 don't get political viva i remember my twitter account don't get political viva oh and then if you don't get interested in politics they get interested in you they shut you down in your homes they destroy everything that you ever thought were the pillars of a civil society they try to reprogram you and they try to get you to believe lies to the point where one story we're going to cover today if uh, someone wants to, if, if a trans person wants to have a vagina installed but doesn't want to cut off their penis, does socialized Medicare have to pay for that treatment? Holy hell. So with that said, what's the way out? Public mockery. What's the way out? Public awareness. What's the way out? Unfortunately, it's got to get bad enough that the Michael Rappaport's of the world say, yep, I'm not voting for Biden anymore. Michael Rappaport's line in the sand was Israel. I know some people are going to take issue with that, with Rappaport. The, the dude... Has, has made a brand of being an asshole, of being an anti-Trump, an unhinged, frothing at the mouth. And I mean literally, because the videos where he's literally spitting while he's spewing his anti-Trump, anti-Marjorie Taylor Greene vitriol, he made a brand on that. And can you imagine that he, whatever his line in the sand was, has now had such a revelation that he's saying it's not off the table for him to vote for pig dick Trump. I think he calls pig dick Trump. Can you imagine that? It got bad enough for Michael Rappaport. When's it going to get bad enough for the people in New York to say, holy hell, Leticia James, you're destroying the Empire State. Holy hell, Fannie Willis, you're destroying, hold on, what is it? You're destroying the Peach State. Peaches are good in Georgia, by the way. How bad does it have to get? We'll find out.
But my goodness, I, I mean, I, sometimes I feel like I'm screaming into the void, but at the very least, I'm reaching some people and it's tough to keep track of. It's, it's tough to keep track of the lies. Lord's tribe came out and staked his reputation as a Harvard law professor on uh, expel, not expulsion, on disqualification on the 14th Amendment, third, third, third uh, article, third subsection. Nine zero for that idiot liar. And then he comes out and says, Trump might have broken the law by posting a picture of Biden gagged, with, not gagged, but he said bound with a bullet in his head, apparently. Lies, lies, consequence-free lying. All right, let's get that number to under 1,000 on YouTube as we all trickle over to Rumble. We're going to get to the rest of the show here. Link to... I went for a long jog this morning. It was 10 kilometers. I mean, that's not that long, but it was, it's long enough. And then I saw a guy getting ready to go... Like, we live in Florida. I, I, I see kids on ATVs going down the road. The guys in parachutes just floating around the sky. It's wild. I see alligators. I mean, I go for a jog. I see alligators, big ones. Um, so what was I just about to say? So come on over. Why is the number going up on YouTube? It should be going down on YouTube, but while it goes down on YouTube, Basil Beshkov says, will your pointing out disinformation blueprint be flagged as disinformation? Dude, I'm already on the, a list on the center for countering digital hate. Not because I spew hatred. Let, let them, let them flag a Jew. I mean, I don't, I'm quite secular and I don't talk about that aspect of my identity because it's irrelevant to my beliefs and philosophies and positions in politics, but let them put me on a list and see who are the ones engaging in you know, dict fascistic patterns. But I get put on a list for the, the, the Center for Countering Digital Hate for environmental climate denialism. Hold on. Uh, you won't believe this Shiite people. Google Center for Countering Digital Hate Climate. Let me see if I can find this report. Here we go. Is this it? I'm not sure I'll be able to find it quickly enough to make it worth your while. Uh, they, uh, I, I'm apparently a climate denialist, a man who loves the outdoors more than anybody else, a man who loves fishing, a man who... I, I, I go to the beach and pick up garbage. I, it's chalk it up to OCD. When I'm jogging and I see a piece of plastic and then I think of a bird getting its head stuck in the plastic, I come home with garbage from jogs. Oh, they're going to call me a climate denialist. Pollution's bad. The environment's changing. We should not be polluting that much. Uh, everything that they're doing in Canada is empowering and enriching China. And if you think that that's um, climate denialism, congratulations, you're a useful idiot. So I have no doubt that I'll be put on that list. Okay, so what, uh, by the way, thank you very much, Basil Beshkov, um, for that generous uh, super chat. I'd like to pick your brain. Okay, we got that one here. And that was it. And now before we head over to Rumble, this is really the last one. I'm just going to pull up the Rumble rants, and then we're going to vote with our feet, vote with our eyeballs, and vote with our dollar. Finboy Slick says, you may not have blood pressure, but you have too much hair on the sides <laughs> of your head. Mullet Faction, did you have a chance to enjoy Barnes Sings Elvis, even though you didn't have time Sunday? Oh, I listened to it before Sunday. It was great. Uh, then we got Lost Courses. Thanks for being so responsive on Twitter. I do hope Barnes takes that idea. Also, Good Logic seems to be trying to get 1776. Oh, yeah, yeah. To, to join him since Barnes called him out. Uh, Joe texted me yesterday, and then I said I was going to, send his message over to Barnes and put them in touch. So I will, might just need a, a reminder on that. Okay, so as we now end on KamiTube, link to Rumble. And if anyone wants to come directly over to vivabarneslaw.locals, because we're not, we're not done with the liars yet. Come on over, link to Locals. Boom, shakalaka. I'm sweating. So I guess that's good. I'm cleansing my pores. <laughs> All right, let's carry it on. On the other, on the other platform, people, the free speech. And we'll, we'll talk about Truth Social also. These these idiots. Ah, Trump lost a billion dollars yesterday. Yeah, after making three and a half billion dollars last week, you guys are morons. That being said, I've got some concerns and I've got some questions. So, what we're going to do now, everybody? We are ending on the YouTube's. We're going to go over to Rumble, carry on with the rest of the show, talk about the rest of the stuff. Um, you can all snip, clip, share away uh, highlights and all that stuff. You know, it's, it's good social media awareness as the children call it these days <laughs> um and uh let's see here mike carleon says is that the guy is that guy related to wiseman that formulated hunter's plea deal no one's weissman with two ends i think and the other one is wiseman this is the other thing like i i i'm in not inundated with all this corruption day in and day out and i still you know the internet is smarter than me that's it 
All right, ending on the YouTubes because we're under a thousand now. Booyah, see you on Rumble.